there are guides out there on the internet about gauge that will tell you to keep knitting gauge swatches um, until you start crying or you get it right, whichever comes first. Uh, this is not that guide. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and this is Easily Knitfluenced. This is a channel where I talk about all things knitting related. Uh, I am a knitter based just outside of New York and I've been knitting um, for many years now, but really only knitting garments for the last year and change, maybe a year and a half, so since 2023. And this is uh, a video that's going to be about my learnings on gauge. So I'm hoping to make this part of a series and uh, I have named it learnings for a very specific reason. A, I am not an expert, so I don't feel comfortable calling this a lesson. Um, so this is really intended to be a collection of things I've learned over the past year and a half as I go through this journey as a knitter. So, you know, these, these videos will also develop. So I wouldn't be surprised if in a year from now, I come at you with new revelations about gauge or whatever the topic is um, because, you know, learning is an iterative process. So as you watch this, you know, think about other things you've read about whatever the topic is, in this case gauge, and, you know, watch other videos about it too. So don't, you know, don't take my word as gospel. Um, this is just like what I as an individual have picked up. Other people's mileage may vary. So with that little disclaimer um, out of the way, I want to talk about all the things I've learned about gauge. So back when I used to just knit blankets and scarves and other um, rectangular objects, I would look at that little number at the bottom of a pattern that said gauge and think, I don't know what this is. Who cares? I'm not going to investigate this any further. Um, obviously those days are behind me now because uh, I knit garments and I actually wear them. And on that note, what I'm wearing today, this is the um, T number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which I knit out of Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the color Peach Stone. So I, w I make things now that I wear. And let's get into the topic of gauge, what it is, and why it's important for that purpose. So what is gauge? This is very simple. Gauge is a measurement. So it is a measurement of how many stitches and how many rows fit horizontally and vertically in a given surface area. So usually that surface area, at least in every pattern I've seen, is 10 centimeters horizontally, 10 centimeters vertically, that is four inches in either direction. So different knitters um, will obviously come out with different results. If you gave me and you know my neighbor or some other knitter and 10 other knitters like the same yarn, the same needles, we would not all come out with the same number of stitches um, within a certain like stockinette square. That's because we have different tensions, we hold the yarn differently, you know, that's kind of, that's just life. Everybody's different. Um, so gauge is really like, it's your guideline within the pattern by the pattern writer who says, listen, if you expect to get the sizing that I have outlined in this pattern for a garment, this is what you need to be aiming for to match what I have done in my pattern. So that's kind of what it is. And what do you do to sort of see if you're going to get there, you knit a gauge swatch. So that is a, you know, 10 by 10 centimeter square little piece of fabric that you use using the needles that you intend to use, the yarn that you intend to use for the project. And you have to wash and block, most importantly. So those numbers that you see on the page, they are for a washed and blocked swatch, not for, you know, what just comes off your needles dry. Okay, so that's important. And then you need to see, okay, how close am I? Am I right? Am I right on the gauge? Am I off? How off am I? What do I need to do about that? So everybody hates gauge swatching, right? Um, I don't hate it personally. Like, I, I don't want to say that. I, you know, it's, it's obviously not my favorite activity. I would rather be knitting the project, but let's talk about why it's important. First and foremost, and this is what you'll see in every article you look up, up about this, sizing. It's important for sizing because if you are significantly off and like how many stitches you're fitting into those four inches is going to affect the final size of your garment. So it will either mean that it could be too small for you or it could be unexpectedly gigantic, um, way too oversized. So that's an important thing, right? If you think logically about like how many inches are fitting into 10 centimeters, multiply that by, you know, however many like centimeters are actually in the project, it's going to affect it, obviously. So 
you need to be aware of that from the get-go and you know think about if you're not hit engage what does that mean for the project and are you willing to live with that the second thing which i don't think gets mentioned as much maybe is like how much yarn you have because um depending on which way you're going in terms of like it, you know your swatch you're getting too many stitches or you're getting too few in the swatch you could run out of yarn midway through the project so if you're knitting say with like um you know a hand dyed yarn that comes in batches and you've ordered a specific amount you might run out of that um which would be unfortunate or you know you might end up with tons of yarn left over if you're a very tight knitter and neither of those are like the end of the world right but obviously all of us like to kind of as i think maybe myself definitely as a completionist like i like to have the right amount of yarn roughly for a project and not have to buy a ton more or end up with lots of like random leftover bits so that is the kind of category i would say is sizing that's why it's important to gauge swatch and figure out what your gauge is going to be the second thing is i would say again i don't think it, this gets talked about as much but it's like the ultimate fabric you're going to end up with and is that something you like or don't like so say you're combining a fingering and a mohair maybe in like slightly different colors that you're going to put together to um to make a project you should gauge swatch that and see if you're actually going to like it because the two separately you may love and think oh this is great you know i'm, I'm going to make something pretty out of this together you might not like them as much and i'm going to show some examples in this section because I, I do have examples of this where you know i did it and i kind of decided not to make the project in those yarns for example let me show you this one this is a gauge swatch that i did um out of pearl soho simply camel yarn paired with um, the Isayer mohair um, in kind of this gold, golden color, which maybe you can see there. I thought, listen, they're both sort of warm colors. I bet they would look really nice, like put together. And then I made this gauge swatch and I was like, you know, this is too yellow for me and I don't really like it. So I didn't end up making the project in this. And so I spent, you know, maybe 20 minutes making this, but hey, at least I didn't you know, waste hours and hours like casting on a zillion st stitches before I realized I just didn't like this color very much. So that's that's one thing to think about with your fabric. The other is texture. So if you are doing cables, for example, or what's very in right now, the all over texture thing, it, you know, not all yarns are created equal in that respect. So it depends on the ply, it depends on the twist of the yarn. Some of them will do great with texture and with cables and they'll really pop. Others you'll be like, ah, this is like not really doing the pattern justice. So very important to gauge swatch for that. So again, you don't waste a ton of time, like get halfway through a sweater and go, you know, I don't love this. And it's not really doing what I wanted it to do with the cables. Another thing to think about is like the, the attributes of the fabric itself. So you might, you know, actually hit gauge right with um, the needles that the pattern recommends and like whatever yarn you're choosing but the overall fabric might be too tight or too loose for you now i'm going to show you a couple of swatches i actually did do a few of these for uh, my sweater number 15 my fa my favorite things knitwear so this is the swatch that i think i eventually ended up going with you know looks pretty normal fyi i am way off gauge with this but i liked the fabric that this produced now, just for kicks, I decided to go up a needle size and you can't see this from behind and on camera, I think this looks kind of fine, but from behind, like this is kind of see-through, like I can see through this. And I tested this on like a bra, for example, and you could kind of see through it. And I was thinking like, listen, if I make a whole sweater out of it, the weight of it also will like kind of pull at these stitches. And you can see there like, especially in between the cables, it is, a little more sheer than I would have liked. So important to gauge swatch and figure out like, how is this actually gonna look on my body, you know, with whatever I'm wearing under this garment? Um, and I'm, am I happy with that? Here's another thing. It also tests how your yarn performs after it's washed and blocked. Important if you are doing color work. So here is a swatch I did for my Robinia sweater. Um, this is two colors of the Pearl Soho Worsted Twist, which I don't think they do anymore, but you know, kind of contrasting a light pink and a purple color now luckily i didn't have any color bleeding with this but that can happen sometimes if you are using a very dark yarn with a very light one you know imagine the heartbreak if you make an entire beautiful color work sweater and then you wash and block it and you've got bleeding of colors into those light shades so you know it's important to put this together not just for aesthetics but like is you know is the dye going to be okay and like what do you do about that if not 
Oh, and like on the topic of this, or even, you know, the cables, for example, swatching is a really good way to practice things like this if you've never done them before. So I had never done color work when I put this together and the fumbling that I did with this swatch, I mean, it looks okay now, but the amount of time it took me to get this right and to like pearl in color work, I mean, my gosh, it was, it was kind of crazy. So better to do that fumbling on a little tiny thing like this than sit there sweating over your beautiful sweater, um, no pun intended, like tugging at the yarn and trying to get it right and like undoing it and, you know, just just do a little, little swatch, much easier, much le lower stakes. Also, if you decide you cannot be bothered and you don't wanna do it anymore, just, you know, this is it. You just toss it out, it's fine. Now, one thing to note, and this I have practiced like in my own life, figure out if um, your tension differs when you knit flat versus in the round. I don't have this issue myself. So I can like, for example, for this, you know, there's certain parts of this that are knit flat and then you join in the round. My tension doesn't differ very much based on like if I'm going flat or not. Um, some people might. So if you're one of those people, you know, do a gauge swatch of both. I know it's annoying, but see how big that difference is and you need to account for that. And, you know, knitting flat, that's super easy. You just kind of, you know, go back and forth on your needles. Um, this is an example of where I knit kind of trying to simulate knitting in the round. So you'll see the back of this, um, but there's various, I mean, there's, you can, you can just look up online like how to do this, but you basically just slide the, the swatch along your needles instead of turning it. And so that way you kind of simulate knitting something in the round. Okay, now let's get to, you know, real life practicalities here. Um, you knit a swatch and your gauge is off. What do you do now? Okay, the internet will tell you, um, just keep going, make another one until you get it right. Uh, like a lot of you, I live in the real world and, you know, I do not feel like knitting 15 different swatches before I start my sweater because it just, frankly, it takes the joy out of all of this for me. So listen, like, you know, for the sweater number 15, something with cables, whatever, I did a couple. I don't always do that. Um, and as you go through this journey, you'll sort of get a sense for like what your average gauge is gonna be with a certain weight of yarn. Like I have a pretty good sense now because I knit a lot of DK, where that's gonna fall, with which needle, with like the feel of the yarn, like you will get a sense of that. So, you know, if you feel like you're totally clueless in this, don't worry, like it, the, the knowledge and like the kind of gut feel for it will build. But that is one option. And, and you know, look, if, if you are a total perfectionist and you're like, I need this to be right on, bang on the gauge, you know, have at it, keep knitting swatches until you get there. I will say if that's your option, you know, the best way you're gonna get that is to actually use the suggested yarn from the pattern. Cause you know, that's what the, the maker knitted out of, the pattern writer. So it makes sense that like, that's how you're probably gonna get closest. But let's say you don't wanna do that. Option two, you proceed with the pattern anyway. So I would only recommend this if the pattern you're working can sustain or absorb a gauge difference. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna use um, just some quick math here, a little bit of an example, and you can try to apply this to whatever pattern you're working on. But basically, the bigger the intended ease of the pattern you're working on, um, the more it's going to be able to absorb any differences in gauge. And so for, for the moment, we're just going to focus on the stitch count. So that is the horizontal measurement. So usually if you're knitting a garment, the sizing is based on the bust size, this being sort of the, I guess, the widest point of the garment usually. And that's what the rest of the measurements will be based on. Um, we'll get to row gauge, meaning the vertical measurement in a minute. But for, um, you know, sizing in terms of like, is it going to fit, you know, over your body, this, the horizontal is the important one. So we're gonna take an example here, I'll, and I'll put some of these numbers up. So you hopefully, you know, this will make it easier to follow along. Let's assume that the gauge intended in the pattern is 20 stitches for four inches in terms of stitch count, okay? So that's the horizontal. And the intended ultimate size, just to make things easy here, is um, going to be 200 stitches over 40 inches, so times 10. Now, whatever difference you get in your ultimate stitch count is obviously going to be multiplied by 10. So let's look at what that looks like. In the intended size, if you get the right gauge here and you get the right number of stitches in those four inches, you are going to have five stitches per inch, okay? And that equals a 40-inch 
ultimate bust circumference. Now, let's assume you're one stitch off in either direction. So if you get 19 stitches in those four inches, that means you have 4.75 stitches per inch. So you might be like, hey, you know, that's not a big difference. It's a quarter of a stitch, like who cares, right? Over, you know, an inch, whatever. But that over, you know, 200 stitches, you are looking at, you know, a two inch difference here. So if you're thinking 200 stitches um, and then 4.75 stitches per inch, now this is a 42 inch garment. Um, so that's a two inch difference. And the same is true in the opposite direction. So if you have 21 stitches in those four inches of your gauge swatch, now you are looking at 5.25 stitches per inch, which gives you an ultimate bust circumference of 38 inches. So it's gonna be smaller than the intended size because you're, you know, you're cramming more of those stitches into the same distance. So your 200 stitches overall are gonna fit into a smaller distance versus the 19 where they're fitting into a bigger distance. And obviously this, you know, this is gonna change the more stitches off you are, the bigger the size difference. But we're just using one stitch here to, to sort of illustrate like even one stitch can make the difference of two inches in the ultimate garment. And listen, this may not matter to you. And full disclosure, like when this happens to me, when I'm like one stitch off, I will just go up or down a needle size and proceed. I won't knit another gauge swatch. I'm like, you know, I know my knitting well enough now that say if I'm at 19 stitches, um, I'll just go down a needle size. If I'm at 21 stitches, I'll go up a needle size and I kind of know that I will make up most of that difference um, with the change in needle side. I, I don't need to go, you know, do another gauge swatch. Um, but again, your mileage may differ. If you're feeling worried about that, maybe knit up a little bit and just see, like make a smaller swatch and just see like roughly what the difference looks like. But usually this is correctable. And the other thing is I tend to knit garments with not a huge amount of positive ease, but enough positive ease that I know if I size up or down in that needle, you know, if I have like a centimeter or like a half inch or something at the end where I'm like not quite perfect on the sizing, it's not gonna matter that much. However, if you're knitting something that is intended to have zero ease or even negative ease, you know, these two inches could matter a lot. So I'm thinking of like, uh, I don't know, the camisoles or things that like, you know, are meant to be like very tight fitting to your body. If you are two inches off in the ultimate measurement there, it's going to be the difference between a garment that fits you really nicely and is kind of fitted versus like something that's baggy under the armholes, for example. Or, you know, it could be the difference between say, you know, a, a garment that fits kind of like this. And I'd say this is probably like, I don't know, maybe four inches of positive ease overall to, you know, something that's a little more like this. And that may not matter to you. You might be like, I'm happy with either one, you know, whatever the outcome, if it's a little on the tighter side, I don't care, but that is entirely individual. So you need to decide what you are happy with. And if you're like, no, I, I really want the positive ease to be whatever, you know, if it's, it's 10 centimeters, four inches, then you wanna try and get as close as possible. If you are okay with things being, you know, a little bit looser, a little bit tighter, but still within a general range of positive ease, you can probably proceed with the pattern anyway and just go with the needle that, you know, you think is going to be right and with the, the swatch that you've already knit and just proceed. So again, like I said, as you move through, you know, and you knit a couple garments, you will get a better sense for this. Okay, so that's horizontal. Now, vert, let's talk vertical. So this is row gauge. I knit a lot of top down. So gotta be honest, I usually don't pay attention to row gauge that much. Um, and this is, you know, also partly from an assumption on my part, and I may be wildly incorrect in this, but it hasn't really steered me wrong yet, that if I'm getting kind of close on, you know, my horizontal, that I'm probably not a million miles off on the vertical, you know, maybe a little off, but I I sort of roughly count row gauge. And if I'm in the vicinity, I'm okay with that because I knit mostly top down. The beauty of that obviously is like, if the garment's a little short, I can just knit it a little bit longer. I try things on a lot as I knit. So the row gauge to me, I mean, yes, it's a good guide. I don't measure that as religiously as I would say, the the stitch gauge 
But this matters if you are doing something bottom up, because if you're doing bottom up, you cannot try it on as you're going the way you would a top down garment. So then you need to kind of get that a little bit, you know, more precisely right. So buyer beware, you know, just make sure that you um, are understanding the mechanics of row gauge and stitch gauge if you're doing something that is knit bottom up or in pieces, for example, like my folklore cardigan that was knit in pieces bottom up. So with that one, I actually used the suggested yarn because I just didn't want to experiment too, too much with, am I going to get the row gauge right and the stitch gauge right and do all these cables right? And, you know, so I was like, listen, I'm just going to make this simple on myself and use the suggested yarn and that will get me, you know, hopefully just closer from the get. Okay, now here is a third option if you're like, okay, I knit my gauge swatch and I'm off, but I want to proceed, you know, with the needle that I've used because I like this fabric that it's producing. And this is when I've seen people, um, as in other podcasters, do this method. I've seen them employ this successfully. Uh, my record with this is not amazing, full disclosure. But this is an option, and, and so I want to put it out there if you're feeling, you know, like, kind of brave, I guess, is to size up or down in the pattern. So in the example I gave, for example, if you're, like, getting um, a measurement that would give you a 42-inch bust, but you want it smaller, you could knit a smaller size than the one you were intending. The opposite is also true. So if you're like, oh, my intended would give me a 38-inch, so it's going to be too small, size up. So if you're going to do the medium, knit the large, for example. Now, the reason I would say be careful with this, um, I did this for my sweater number 15, which was, hang on, I'll pull out the swatch again, um, the all-over cable pattern. And full, again, I there there is something about cables. When it comes to cables, I feel like my kind of barometer for swatching and gauge is like way off. So this, you know, this is the one I'm talking about. I was way off gauge with both of these actually. And so, you know, my, whoops, my whole exercise in knitting two was to see if like a bigger um, needle would get me closer. I'm still not on gauge with the bigger needle. And this was like too gappy, as I said. So I was not happy with that. And I'm like, well, I can't size up even more to get gauge to get an even like thinner, you know, fabric. I don't want to do that. So what I did instead is I was going to knit the medium. Instead, I knit the large thinking that, you know, because I was so off that it would essentially like cancel out. And so I would eventually get something that fit like a medium. Um, and I didn't, I got something that fit like a large. So my record with this is, is not great. I mean, it's still a garment that I wear. I still really like it, but it just was it didn't come out the way I intended it to. So <sighs> experiment is all I can say. I haven't gotten this right yet. If anybody has any, you know, wisdom about cables and what it is that they do exactly to your gauge, please share those below. Um, this is not something I've figured out yet, and I hope that I do one day so I can share those thoughts with you. But the two cable projects I've done both had slightly unexpected results. So this one turned out really like very oversized. Not a big deal. I still wear it. The folklore cardigan was with my other cable project. I hit gauge on that, but the gauge was not set to be in cables. The gauge was supposed to be in the moss stitch, which I got. I was right on. And still that, you know, the garment came out smaller than it should have. And I ended up with a skein and a half of yarn left. So <sighs> cables are an enigma to me. I don't know. It seems to be like a black hole that either just swallows up my, you know, ease or kind of blows up and turns into just giant garments. I'm not sure what happens, but I'm putting it out there. It's an option to size up or size down and kind of experiment that way as well. So that's it. That is my kind of collective learning so far on all things gauge related. As I said, I hope that I end up doing more, more videos on this topic because it means that I've learned more. Maybe I revise my thoughts. Maybe I refine my thoughts. But that's what I've learned in the last year and a half and what kind of I'm applying to my knitting. And so far seems to be working out um, okay for me. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. As I said, combine this with articles, other research, other podcasters, guides, um, you know, things that other people put together about this topic, because I think it's important to form a, a holistic view on anything. If you have any any comments or questions, 
um, any other thoughts you would like to express, please put them in the comments, um, like and subscribe. I'm always happy to hear suggestions from you guys on other videos you'd like to see, so please include those as well. Uh, but that's it for today. So thanks for tuning in and see you guys next time.